for underutilized roads that no one can afford to use or drive. So we're going to have to be covering all the debt on these failing toll roads, and we still have to come up with the money to fix our regular free roads without tolls. Um, and you see what this mess, this cycle that we're creating, because there's not enough money for either of those things. Now we're over $31 billion in debt for these toll roads, and there's not enough traffic to cover the debt. It's forcing toll hikes like that 32% rate hike that the NTTA did in 2011, and now they've pegged it to have an automatic increase every year since. Taxpayers have already bailed out that Austin toll system. There's three roads that the state operates. There's another one that their RMA operates. But the three that just Texas operates, they bailed it out with $100 million in our gas tax money already. And it's only been open a few years. Taxpayers are being set up for what I think is an infrastructure bailout that's going to be considered too big to fail. And we're going to have to come up with who knows how many billions of dollars to bail out all these funds, all this debt. Even toll agency officials, one in particular in the Metroplex, are expressing concern about the sustainability of this policy. This was in a Dallas Morning News article in 2009. And oddly, the gentleman we quote, who's Victor Vandergriff, he was the chair of the NTTA at the time, and now he's a transportation commissioner. And here's what he said. People are going to realize that every new road in the Metroplex is going to be a toll road, and that even our free roads will soon have a toll component. Well, he wisely got out of there as fast as he could. <laughs> now he's trying to fix the problems at TechStop, and he's the lone voice on a commission of five appointees from the governor. Well, here's what tolling existing roads looks like. When they add no toll lanes down the middle of an existing freeway, who gets congestion relief in this picture? Those that can pay $9.50 to go 10 miles. That's a heap of change. And this is why the next generation, like my 18-year-old daughter, who was itching to drive, realizes, I can't even afford to drive. <laughs> they can't afford the insurance, they can't afford a car, and they certainly can't afford this. Um, so we're just creating a big mess. And how much is it really going to cost you? Well, at that 95 cents a mile on these privatized toll roads, that's like adding $17 to every gallon of gas you buy. For every mile, you've got to take one of these toll roads. The published toll rates down in my neck of the woods for a publicly run toll project they're trying to do on 281 would be 50 cents a mile in peak hours. Well, that's not much better than those private toll roads. That's still 10 bucks a day for just a 10 mile commute. That's round trip, but still. If you look at the Centra operated LBJ, and of course another project they're gonna open next year, which is on 820, it'll be 95 cents a mile. Well, let's translate that out for the whole project. That's 12 bucks, one way, 24 bucks a day. 120 bucks a week or over six grand a year. And that's just for one driver, one household, one round trip a day. Now you're starting to see how much tax money we're talking about here. It's one of the largest tax increases in our lifetime. So really it's pennies a day versus dollars a day. A gas tax funded road costs about one to two cents a mile to take a gas tax funded road versus toll roads are anywhere from 12 cents a mile up to this 95 cents a mile. Um, and the tolls we pay increase the cost of everything we buy. Because if, even if you never take one of these toll roads, your gas tax money's bailing them out or building them. And all your goods at HEB, everything else you buy is going to go up because that cost of transportation going up, they just pass that on to us again. So no elected official, on top of all this, no elected official has any oversight over these toll rates. And they do that by design. They want the tax out of the hands of we the people, obviously. Now let's look at the federal level. President Obama, he announces in May of this year his highway bill on the federal level because it expired um, in, uh, right before the August recess. They really had to pass something. Well, they just kicked it down the road past the November election into next May. So we're not going to know what the end result of this federal bill is until May of next year at the earliest. He introduced a highway bill that would impose tolls on all of our existing interstates. Like every lane you drive on now, he wants to slap tolls on. And he wants to pay for his bill with corporate tax hikes, as if our corporate tax rate isn't already the highest in the world. And he wants to put emphasis on transit, rail, and bike trails. Because, of course, that's what we all use, right? Crazy. So who's with us, right? I want to try and give you some good news after I've given you all this bad news, okay? A Rasmussen poll was done shortly after the president announced his bill, and he found, of course,